This program is brought to you by Emory University. So if someone's describing a scene to you um, and they're describing how it looks and how it sounds and how it smells, you're actually representing how it looks, sounds, and smells in your sensory systems. Or if someone's describing to you how to pick something up, you're, you're representing how to, what they're saying in your motor system. Um, and then just the state of your body is also um, very important uh, as well. Um, like if you're, if you're in a state associated with positive affect, so for example, if you're bringing things towards you in an approach manner, this creates positive affect, whereas if you're, if you're doing these kinds of actions, it creates negative affect. And these things actually spill over into evaluation. So if you're asked to evaluate a piece of writing and, you're, and your body's in a state associated with physical affect, you think it's a good piece of writing. If, you're, if, it's, in a, if it's in a state associated with negative affect, you think it's a poor state of writing. And the bodily states that can influence this are like your, the, the position of your, your musculature in your face, whether it's associated with smiling or frowning. You know, your he head action, if you're nodding positively or, or shaking your head negatively, this affects your, 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 not only your emotion, but your cognition, how you evaluate things, your posture, um, your arm actions, everything. In all the states of your body affect how you think. Um, people are showing that the environment affects how you think. So if somebody hands you a, a, gla a drink that's cold and you're asked to then evaluate, um, say, a piece of writing, you're, you're more negative than if someone hands you a warm drink. So if you're in a colder room, you're more negative than if you're in, your, uh, in a slightly warmer room. So um, all of these things influence cognition. Um, in ways that have never been anticipated, um, and kind of bringing home the theme that we that when one studies cognition, you have to stu study it grounded in all of these different systems. There are these these three major influences over the past three decades, you know, that have transformed the original thinking of cognition as kind of a modular co co computer-like computational device. First of all, thinking about it as a more statistical uh, system. Second, grounding it in, 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 in neural mechanisms. And then third, grounding it in, in the sensory motor systems, uh, in the body and in the environment. And then kind of these additional influences that have been percolating together along with all these other things, the, 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 the importance of social uh, interaction, uh, of affect and emotion, of culture and of developmental trajectories. So basically what we have now is we're kind of in a we're kind of in a situation where we're trying to understand how the brain works and how understand how cognition works and we realize we have to kind of work on all these things um, together. We can't really it's it's increasingly difficult to justify s studying each of these things independently. Uh, it, it maybe for it's for a certain period of time it makes sense to understand the mechanisms in a particular system but ultimately one has to understand how they um, all relate to each other, which is a huge challenge in and of itself. If you have to understand a, a large, complex system, that's much more challenging than understanding a small, modular system. So there's a, you know, people are trying to get their heads around that, trying to understand um, how something might, like that might work. There's been a tremendous amount of work in this decade demonstrating that when people are representing knowledge or understanding language or reasoning, that they're running simulations of the things they're thinking about or processing or understanding uh, in kind of the motor system, in the visual system. They're using their body, they're running it on their body, they're using the environment for support in various ways. And that kind of cognition is distributed throughout all of these systems. It's essentially grounded in all of these other systems. Like let's say you have to give a talk. People will become extremely anxious um, beforehand because they're not just simply imagining it in a detached way, that they're imagining it in a way as if they're really there. They really feel like they're present in the situation, giving the talk and their experience that they're imagining, say, people not liking what they say or, or something going wrong. And because it seems so real, they actually generate emotional experiences that would be comparable to, to giving a presentation where things don't go well. And so they're actually experience it, experiencing it in their body and it produces the kind of emotion and stress responses that actually occur in the real situation. The same, a similar kind of thing might be for, for people who have experienced trauma. 
um, and uh, PTSD where people are reliving an experience. They're running a simulation of the past event and it's not, again, detached. It seems so real that they just become debilitated um, by the experience of recreating uh, what happened previously. And that's what's kind of new and revolutionary about the work taking place in this decade is we're beginning, just, just barely beginning to understand the mechanisms at a, at a detailed and specific level um, that operate uh, to produce these experiences. The cognitive abilities we have are very social in nature. They allow us to do all these social things. And so trying to understand cognition independently of the social world increasingly seems like um, a major mistake uh, to many people. Uh, even though up until the current time, and even still in the current time, the social aspects of intelligence and the cognitive aspects are largely studied independently. It's really a minority of people currently who are really looking at their true interaction. Although I think it's the case that many people realize how important it is, it is to bring these things together. And so I think this is already starting to happen and will carry forward tremendously into the future. The situation is leading to some real challenges and dilemmas about how you train students, even how you kind of define departments and programs within departments. So in a psychology department these days, you know, what kind of programs are you going to have? What kind of faculty are you going to include? There's just tremendous amounts of creative work being done uh, as people are putting all of these things together and they're looking across sort of all aspects of life uh, in ways um, that have never been done before. And, it, and so research is not nearly as dry and boring as it once was. It's kind of much more out in the world, even though there's still a tremendous amount of work looking at basic mechanisms, it becomes very idealized and distilled. But there's a lot more interest in bringing things into the world. Things that happen in basic science and in all of these areas that we've been talking about just have tremendous applications get picked up um, in applications having to do with medicine, technology, education, social services. I'm really, inter I'm really interested in understanding how the basic simulation mechanisms that we've been working on for the last 10 years can be used, can be brought to bear on understanding uh, the generation of stress, and then further trying to understand the mechanisms that can disable those simulations so that they're no longer stressful. Um, and there are a lot of um, interesting ideas coming, again, this coming together of various things from different disciplines, coming out of clinical research, but also coming out of contemplative traditions such as Buddhism. I think this is one uh, particularly intriguing kind of way in which this kind of research can be taken in terms of <laughs> An application. Um, <laughs> That's weird. I think you could just. You're, you're my way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Too much electrical activity. <laughs> the preceding program is copyrighted by Emory University.